This is turning into a dream day for me, an absolute nightmare for the cameraman. Never known anything like it, literally mid-morning. They don't show anywhere else on the lake. To catch a fish of this size is incredible. They are absolutely stacked up down here now. If the week wasn't already going amazingly well, I think it's about to get a whole lot better. That's the quickest bite I've ever had in 20 years of angling. Mate, it is a proper tank. Now, why it is? I can definitely see the appeal for these kind of lakes and why people come on holiday. Welcome to the approach, and in this series, we are going through everyone's approach who's fishing with us. So I'm fishing with Charlie and I'm fishing with Tell, and we're going to be fishing at Dream Lakes Complex, and this is Lake Two behind us. Obviously, our approaches are all completely different. Charlie fishes a nice big fish water in Reading. The man fishes in the Lee Valley, fishing for the old ones. And you know me, I fish for whatever comes along. I don't really mind. So like I said, we've got two pro anglers with us. They're both on our team. They've been on our team for a long time now. But it's really nice to be able to find out the sort of intricacies of their angling. Because what we always see is they send us in photos and you know, you see it in the angling publications and on social media. But it's going to be really nice to actually find out exactly how they go about their fishing. Like I say, tell you fish um, like the Lee Valley and the old, old fish. Um, Charlie's fishing at Wellington Country Park, for example, and fishing for some massive, massive ones. So we're all going about it slightly different. How do you think this is going to be? There's definitely a lot of fish showing, which is the first thing. It's a million miles away, really, from what my normal angling's like. So it'll be interesting to see if what how I would normally fish those pits can sort of maybe bring in more fish on these more commercial waters exactly. and whether or not the two tactics sort of cross yeah. over and see how we go, yeah. What about you, Charlie? I mean, obviously this is not well in Country Park. This is not normally the places you would fish, but... My approach is going to be pretty similar, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Loads of bait, you can find them, which we've seen a few, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, perfect, yeah. We got here a day late, so the lakes have already been picked. Uh, we've got an area down at one end that we've got enough swims. We've got six swims between us. Um, the lads that are already here, they're actually in two groups and they've chosen to fish together anyway. So luckily, there is a corner that we can go into, which is going to be good, to be fair. Yeah, I mean, it's good. <laughs> we've been sitting here for half hour, 45 minutes, and we've seen loads of fish push down that end. For me, that just means there's no lines down that end and that's why they're there. So we're going to have yeah. to go in tiptoe, I think, and yeah, not scare them off. Yeah, <laughs> try not to scare them. Yeah. But they're there because everybody came and cast out yesterday. Exactly. So. But I think if we if we st keep quite calm and uh, don't make too much of a noise, we should be able to keep them in that area. And I think so. See how we go. We're going to get ourselves together. Um, it's been a long old drive down, so we're going to get ourselves together and we are going to go get fishing. Yeah, ready? Yeah, yeah, sweet. Let's do it. So having lost the draw, I've ended up in peg 21. And to be honest, it's a really, really good peg. So I've got a lot of water in front of me. I'm now gonna go get my marker rod. I'm gonna try and find some features out there. Hopefully I'm gonna find some nice firm silt. There's, I know there's a lot of gravel here, it's a gravel pit and everybody fishes on gravel. So I wanna try and do something a little bit different. Hopefully once I've found the silty area, I'm gonna put a load of crumb out, quite a bit of maize as well so the car can get in there, have a grub around. Hopefully we can have a good session and catch plenty of carp. So I'm in the swim and I'm ready to get my gear out. I'm ready to start fishing. Charlie's decided to go on the left. Terry's decided to go on the right. He's in the corner and Charlie is the closest to kind of everyone else. Um, but there is loads of space. Everyone seems to have picked a swim where it's pick a swim, miss a swim, pick a swim. So there is a bit of space in between us all, um, which is good. Everyone seems to be either back led in or slack lining. So I'm not really bothered about being in the middle because I think the fish are going to be showing over there in the morning, which we have seen, um, and hopefully they're going to be moving all around. Speaking to the bailiff, he said the fish are very nomadic, they move all over this lake, and yes, I might be stuck in the middle, but you know what, I'm not bothered at all. I'm going to try and build a swim, I'm going to find a nice area that I can keep baiting consistently, and hopefully 
effort will equal reward. I've gone for swim 18. I came first out of the draw. We're pretty limited because we arrived here a day later than everybody else. I know that nobody's going to be fishing in swim 17 next to me, so I get the whole corner of this lake. I can fish straight out into the open water if the fish seem to be showing there, and I have a whole margin bank along there. So it's the furthest point also away from the house or the amenities. So it's probably the least pressured area on the lake. So I would imagine when people come here, they draw. A lot of people want to be close to the hut uh, for the toilets and showers and things like that. This is the furthest point away. So my theory is that as the week goes on and the pressure builds around the lake, if I can stay quiet in this corner, the fish will naturally migrate here out of, uh, to get away from the pressure of the lake. So what I'm going to do now I'm going to quickly walk up that margin. There's three permanent markers that are already in the bank. So I'm going to go take a look at them spots, see how obvious they are. And then I'm going to take a marker rod there and find some areas that are slightly off those spots that might catch the carp a little bit unaware. Um, so we're going to go do that now. Right, so I've come around to that far margin and uh, just up there to the right of me, um, is one of the permanent markers and when you walk into that spot you can see it's big and glowing it's well fed on I've just crept into this area here I'm just going to have a little lead around with the marker floating here because although that's a big blatant spot this has also been fed on but not as heavily so hopefully if I fish this area here with a scattering of boilies I can pick up some warier fish that might not be feeding on the main spots so the reason that they've put those permanent markers up there is they've left those in so that the swims that I'm in and the swim on the opposite bank, they've automatically got a spot to cast to that's been fed and it's a well-worked area. So those are the spots that we'll have regular bait in, but sometimes they're not always the best spots to pick your fish up. Sometimes it's better to fish away from those spots with a handful of bait so it looks like it's just a miscast or something like that and you can pick up some of the warier fish that might be hanging around the edges of those areas. So I've also put on my Polar Fair Seeker glasses and what this does is the polarised lenses takes the glare off the top of the water so I can see down along this margin right to the bottom of the shelf and I can see the areas that are being fed on, they're not being fed on, slightly fed on. I can see the differences and find a good area that I think I've got a strong chance of a catch. So once I've got the spot and I'm all clipped up to the distance, I've got a marker light that I'm going to place down there on the same line that I'm cast into. So I know every time now, if I get a take, all I've got to do is clip it up to the distance and aim at the light. So that's all the tackle run through. I'm now going to put the float in onto the spot that I want to fish to. We'll go around to the swim and we'll get clipped up. Right, so as I said earlier, I found my spot over on that far margin and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip up the rod that I'm going to fish onto that spot. Now the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to cast my lead short of the marker but as close as I can get it and then I'm going to slowly peel off line and clip them up until I hit the clip and it falls on the marker. So you'll see that cast there is just fallen, probably about six foot short of the marker. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to peel off up to my eye, peel off again up to my eye, and then I'm going to put that into the clip and wind in again. Perfect. So what I'm going to do now, this is in the clip and on the exact spot, I'm going to reel it in, take it over to my distance sticks and get it wrapped up. Now what I mean by that is, over there I've got two distance sticks and they're placed 12 foot apart, so one rod length apart. I'm going to take it over, I'm going to place my lead around my left hand distance stick and then I'm going to go around in a figure of eight motion until I hit the clip and then that will give me the exact amount of wraps it is to that spot. So I know every time I go to wrap that distance up, I'm always going to hit that area.
happening, mate? You good? Yeah, mate, yeah, good, good. Right, I've come here because I want to know what bait you're using, what rigs you're using, because yeah. I need all the help I can get. Yeah. <laughs> I think my initial thoughts is not to go too heavy. Yeah. So we've got here, um, and you walk around, and I think everybody, even when you walk around, there's somebody spawning or something put, somebody is putting bait in everywhere. somewhere, like everywhere. Every single so person. So I've yeah. got a nice quiet corner out of the way, so I'm going to yeah. stay light, I think, initially. Yeah. Uh, I picked a spot out in the open water. Yeah. On a little bit on the gravel scene where it has silt hits yeah, the gravel. Yeah, yeah. I've got, the I've got a spot yeah. there, and then uh, obviously the margin. So I've got a lovely margin there as yeah, well. It's yeah. really looking nice. Yeah, it is. So sun's beating down in this corner as well. So should be good. But I think what I'm going to do, uh, I'm just going to knock up a little particle boiling mix for the open water spot. Uh, I'm going to get one of these uh, hemp maize mixes. So there's roughly three kilos of bait there. Straight away, let's get it all in the pot. And then I'm going to put three cans of sweet corn in. I love a bit of sweet corn. The thing is, instantly you've got hemp and sweet corn. There's not a carp in the world no. that won't eat hemp and they sweet corn. All of that. And it's it's just basic, it's just a basic carp mix, you yeah. know, there's nothing fancy, there's no yeah. there's no little bit well, there's no um crumb or anything in yeah. there. It's just a, put down a good feeding area yeah. of these fish see it day in, day out. Yeah. So um I think uh, I think as long as my baiting is a lot more accurate, I don't need tons of it. Yeah. Um, and then we'll just see how the first night goes, yeah. you know. So I've got my hemp, maize, sweet corn, and then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw in a few handfuls of the ever faithful cell boilie. Consistent carp catching that one, isn't it, mate? Consistent. Yeah, I don't think there's a carp in the world that hasn't seen the cell boilie yeah. at some point. Yeah, he's mad. So I've dropped some down there and then put the lid on. Good old shake up, Drop and there on. you have it. Just a Perfect. traditional standard, yeah, nice carp mix. Yeah. Nothing fancy, nothing like no glugs, no additives, yeah. no nothing like that. Just straight as it is. Lovely, get it nice out. Nice and there. simple, isn't it? Yep. Happy days. All right, mate. Well, oh. I'm going to leave you to it. Perfect. I'm going to uh, get my rods out and go from there. We we'll get that baited up. Good luck, bro. Cheers, mate. See you later. Thanks a lot. So Biffy's up. We're all sorted. I've actually managed to get a little bit of bait out as well. Found a spot at about 18 and a half wraps, um, right on the back of some gravel, and there's a lovely bit of silt for probably about a rod length. Um, I'll go into depth on that and show you how I've done that. Um, but for now, I'm gonna get the rods out and see how it goes. I'm gonna be fishing three rods on that spot for now. So I've seen fish just behind the spot, which is absolutely perfect. Really does build a lot of confidence. I'll probably put about 15 spawns out, just a mix of boily, crushed boilies, bit of pellet, bit of hemp, stuff like that. And uh, But uh, once again, we will be showing you exactly all of that in depth along this series. So for me, I set my marker float up at 20 wraps. That means I'm never gonna be able to cast past halfway. I'm not gonna interfere with anybody else's angling. And if I wanted to fish at 20 wraps, I could, but that's my maximum distance. So I did the wraps again, made sure that it was about 18 wraps, which it was set my um, spot up for 18 and a half wraps so that I know I'm just into the silt and also set my rods up for 18 and a half wraps. Done a few practice casts, make sure they are all spot on and they're ready to go. And now it's a case of getting it out there and uh, pull the marker back in because I've already put a little bit of bait in. So I've left the marker out so I know exactly where my rods are gonna go. And then once they're out and they're, they're fishing, I'll reel the marker back in and I'll be 100% confident I know that my rigs are over the bait that I've put out. Absolutely perfect. And then under the clutch, take it out of the clip, bow arm over. When I talk about clipping up or doing wraps, uh, it involves the line clip on the reel. So this is a silver piece here, can be black sometimes, but it's basically a metal clip that's on the side of the reel. And all you do is when you hit the area you want, you put the line underneath that, and that's called clipping it up. Then when you cast out, when you reach the distance, it hits the clip and then it falls on a tight line through and you can feel the lead down perfectly. If you hear anybody saying they're clipping up or they're wrapping at 18 wraps, they'll always put it in the line clip. The rod tip straight into the water and that will sink the line. I'm fishing with a fluorocast, which is the fluorocarbon, and that will sink perfectly, sink like a brick, and I will be fishing relatively slack lines. I don't want to fish tight lines, so I'll be fishing slack lines. That will make sure that any fish coming along won't know I'm here, hopefully, can nick a bite. 
So the rod's gone out, 18 wraps, absolutely perfect. When you are casting, you've done your wraps, you clipped it on the reel, make sure you hit the clip. Not too hard, but just as the lead just about to go down into the water, if it doesn't hit a clip, just redo it. Reel in and go again. It's so, so important you hit the clip. Because what that would do, it would push all of the um, end tackle forward and it'd make you, it would just make much better presentation. It's really, really important. Also, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a back lead on. And this does quite a few things, actually. One, because we are fishing a really, really high-pressured water with lots of anglers, I like using a back lead because what I'll do is sink the line so that will make so the fish will feel safe so they can come up and down. Also, when I'm playing a fish, I'm not going to be able to get caught up with my other lines because I'm fishing three spots quite close to each other. The, this little back lead will really, really help me. Um, so I'm going to put that on now. Open the bail arm, just carefully bring the rod back to get the to catch the line, like so. I think these have got a little connector that you get the line, just clip it on, push it down, and then just slide the back lead in. I like to have them just past, just a little bit out past the rods, lower it down nice and carefully. Once the back lead is out of harm's way, you want to set the clutch so it could just take a little bit of line so the rod doesn't get pulled in. Then you want to put it on the rest, put your bobbin on, and you're away to go. That's the third rod out now, it landed perfectly. I've just heard a bite alarm go off to my right, so it looks like one of the boys has one. Well, as you can see, I'm bent into one and it hasn't taken long. I put about 15 spawns out and left the area for about an hour. Come back from something to eat. And uh, this one has just ripped off. Literally, it's probably been in the water for about half an hour, I reckon. This was actually the first one I put out. Ooh, I hate when they plink off the uh, top fin. I'm only fishing at about 18 and a half wraps, so I haven't needed the big rods or anything like that. Great venue to fish at a good range. Drop the lead. Max, can I come in and grab my net, please? Little uh, white barrel wafter, milky malt from DNA baits, and a slip D multi rig. Drop the lead on the take. Happy days. Got one in the net. Scale's all zeroed. Fish is unhooked. Let's see how much she goes. She's not a monster, but she's first. And I am uh, absolutely over the moon with it, to be honest. Love getting off the mark. Knowing the new spot's worked. Fish is all safe in there. Well, she weighs 22 and a half pounds. Like I said, no monster, but over the moon. Well, this is the first one of the approach series for me. I'm very, very happy. Just over 22 pound. And it's a pretty one, a few scales on it. But before I put it back, I'm going to put some pro care on any little wounds or any little marks that are on her and then she'll go back none worse for wear. What an absolute cracker. You don't want to rush them when they swim off, so let them in the water, put the floats either side of their body so they feel secure. With their head out of the sling, I can see her now, she's looking like she wants to go. Gills are flaring. And then when they're ready, they'll swim off.
right. So yesterday I found my spots, I put my baited area out in open water and uh, scattered a load of bait along the margins, but we've um, woke up today and the fish are definitely down here, but they seem to be really concentrated in a tight area in between the two spots. Uh, they're showing they're going mad. So I think what I'm gonna do initially is I'm gonna reel in my right hand rod off the open water spot, keep the bait on, because it's an artificial bait anyway, and I'm just gonna put the single artificial bait in amongst the main bulk of fish, and, um, and yeah, we're gonna see how that goes. So that's the spotting done. I had a fish and I had it over bait. So I'm going to be continuing that. Every time I have a fish, I'd like to put out three, four, five, six bombs, depending on sort of the area or the depth. I've got about eight foot out there. So I know that the bait is going to be pretty close to where I'm casting my rigs. If I'm fishing in really deep water, I'll probably put a little bit more bait out there because I know the spread is going to be a lot more than if it's in shallow water. When you're spodding, you do really need the right kit. I've got a free spirit spod rod, which is absolutely fantastic for this job. I can cast this. 30 yards or I could cast it 200 yards. I actually tested it over a field and we was putting it over 200 yards. It's an absolute beast and it does the job perfectly. I actually use it for my marker float fishing as well. So the tip is really stiff. So when I'm pulling back, I can feel every little knock and bump and it's perfect for both. So I use a spod rod for both my marker and my spawn. Moving down to the reel, I use a dedicated reel for the job. So this is actually a Shimano spod reel. It's really, really good. It's got a big retrieve on it. So one turn is about a meter in. So if you're fishing at long range, you know you haven't got to keep winding in and winding in and not bring much line back in. This is about a meter per turn, which is fantastic. And it's built for the job. It's really, really hard wearing. The clutch isn't as smooth as say one of your fishing rods, doesn't need to be. You crank it up as tight as you can and you cast it out and you don't want any slip. And I never, ever get any slip with these reels. They are really, really good. Whether it be from Shimano, whether it be from Dive or whether it be from any other fishing brand, get yourself a dedicated spod or marker reel. Moving on to the line, I'm using our dedicated marker and spod braid, which is called Transmit. It's really, really thin, casts an absolute mile, and I use this in conjunction with the Shockweave shock leader. Basically, I tie an Albright knot or a back-to-back -back Grinner knot. Either one works perfectly with these, and then you can cast them out as far as you want. Absolutely no dramas whatsoever. The marker float will go way further than your rods, which is exactly what you want. You don't want to be able to not cast your marker as far as you can cast your rod, so you want to be able to go that little bit further so that you know what's out and beyond so then when you bring it back, you know exactly what you're fishing over. Same with a spod or spawn, whatever you're using. It has to be able to go the distance that you're fishing. And using a braid is paramount to that, especially when using a marker float. With the marker, you 100% need a braid. It is really, really important. Zero stretch, mega strong. And when you're pulling back, you'll be able to feel every little knock and bump on the bottom. When connecting the shockweave to the transmit, I normally use a back-to-back -back grinner, sometimes an all-bright knot, but normally a back-to-back -back grinner. And because it's nice and small, it's perfect to go through the eyes. You don't get any clattering or clanging. And I normally do two or three turns on the reel and then a spawn to be about down to the spigot. That ensures that you've got full strength, full power on the reel, and you've got no worries about cracking off. To tie the back-to-back -back grinner, you simply overlay both pieces of line. You make a loop in one, and you whip it round five times. You do the same in the other side. When you pull them back down, you then pull both lines together. They butt up together really, really tight. Give them a real good stretch. Obviously, put a little bit of moisture between them and then cut the lines really, really tight. That's a tiny little knot. And then moving down to the part that actually gets the bait out there, whether you're using a spawn, whether you're using a spod, whether you're using a dot spod, whatever, they all basically do the same job. You open these up. You load it with bait and you click it back down again. Same with any other way of doing it. Attached, you can either tie it straight to the swivel or like I've done, I've done a massive great big uh, figure of eight knot and a tiny little one and that then loops over the spawn so I can change it from a large, a medium, whatever I choose. It's all in one and perfect and I don't have to keep retying this knot over and over again, which could lead to you actually making this shorter and shorter and shorter and the two turns on the reel become one turn. So I'm actually wearing a finger stall. This is really, really important when using braid, whether that be on a marker float or whether it be on a spod. This one's made of leather. It basically just stops your braid from cutting through your finger. There's a hell of a lot of pressure being put through your finger when you're casting these out, especially because you've got no slip on the clutch whatsoever. So you really can cause some bad injuries if you don't use a finger stall. They are very, very, very important. So enough talking about it. I am going to put one more out for luck. I'm going to show you the process. I've just talked through it, but you know what? It's better to show you in person. 
open up the spom, take a couple of scoops, and click it back down. Very, very simple. Give it a shake so you make all the bait at the bottom. Notice I've got two buckets. That saves me bringing a spod station. Makes life a lot easier. Two buckets is perfect for me. Perfect height, no bad back. I can go from there. Give her a tug. Make sure there's no line wrapped around the tip. Bail arm at the top. Make sure your finger stall is right perfectly nice and tight. Open the bail arm. Make sure the clutch is fully tight. You do not want this to slip on the cast. That would be an absolute nightmare. We'll really rip into your finger. I'm right-handed, so it'll be my left leg going forward. The target I'm going for is the tall tree in the distance. And I've only got to cast about 18 wraps, so it's not a massive cast, but I'll still set up every time the same, just so I know the accuracy is perfect. Line it up, drop it back, and then cast it out. Hit the clip. I'll give it a few seconds to go out there, because once the bomb hits the surface, I know that the bait is being deposited properly. If you whip it straight back in, sometimes the bait actually comes back with it. So I'd rather wait for it out there, so that when it comes up to the surface, I know that the bait's being deposited perfectly. Because I'm using braid, give it a whip, it comes straight up to the surface, and you can reel it in perfectly. And then just repeat the process. Don't go mad to start with, fish for a bite. Once you get a fish, you can then keep topping it up. You can't take the bait out once it's in. I'm away, I'm away. How's that? Run hour off. The first one, this margin side that I said that I'd put the bait to uh, yesterday uh, is away. We're into a fish. I've come off the baited areas and fish just off the spots. So basically, where the fish are cruising up and down, they just think that my bait is a little bit of random bait that's fallen off the spot. So they're not moving onto big clean areas. They're just feeding in the little silty areas of the side of the spots and we're away. My uh, foreign PB is only 54 pound and there's a hell of a lot of fish in here that will beat that. So hopefully I'm not going to get drenched. Yes! Get in! Come on! That'll do. Yes! We're off. We're off the mark. We've got probably a mid 40, something like that down there. First fish. I quickly whip that rod back out. 20 minutes later, we're in again. So what I'm going to do, because they're still showing, they're obviously still feeding, I'm going to whip this one in, get another rig on, get a bait back out there. Yes! Two down. Before I get these fish out of the water, what I'm going to do is quickly show you how to zero your scales. So when you put the fish on the scales, you get a correct true weight of what the fish actually weigh. Sometimes you see them, they don't take the weight off first and then zero the uh, sling afterwards. That's all the wrong way to do it. To get the actual proper weight of a carp, what you need to do is you set your scales at zero to start off with and then you need to get your retainer sling or your waist sling, wet it so it's got water, it's holding water, it's already wet. Then add the sling to the zero scales, zero set scales. So you add your sling there and then you'll see the weight of this retaining sling is four pound, just under four pound. That's a lot of weight difference, especially if you're trying to weigh big carp because the pounds matter. So you turn the, zero, the scales back to zero. So those scales are now bang on zero. So when you put the fish into a wet sling and lift it up, put it on your scales, you're gonna get a true reading of what that fish weighs. So I'm gonna get the fish out now. We're gonna go for the smaller common first. It's probably around low 30, and then we'll get the bigger mirror out after that. Make sure your retaining sling is not sitting on the bottom of the mat 
and she weighs 27.4. So lovely common. Let's get her up, set some pictures. Right, so lift the fish. We're going to slide our hand under the left body, left hand side of the body. Just grab the anal fin with your fingertips, slide your other hand from the head back, and then that pushes, or this one's right hand peck back. Slide it, the front fin between your two fingers, bring it up into yourself. So then if it flaps around, you can just roll it back onto your arms, like that. Lift her up. Make sure she's straight, the camera. Make sure the tail's up. You see a lot of people hold them like this. Make sure the tail's up a little bit so you get a great shot of the fish. Let's get him back and get the other one out. So here we have it, the first proper one of the trip. 38 pounds, six ounces. Absolutely buzzing to get off the mark. And it just goes to show with the right approach, a couple of grains of corn, cast up feeding fish, Great result. After watching Tao and Jay catch a fish, well, Tao's had two actually. I'm filing into one as well, and it's only day one as we got here late. Heart is racing, legs are going. Let's hope we can get it in. Well done, Charlie boy. <laughs> Excuse the top off, it's absolutely baking here. The sun's come out and it's about a million degrees, so please excuse the fat belly, but I've got to come in and help him land his first fish. Well done, mate. So good to get off the mark. I know what it's like to have the pressure. Luckily, I had one yesterday. Tell's had a couple today. And Charlie's now into his first one, which means the pressure's off and it really, really is good to have that because that means you're confident in the spot and you can now just really enjoy the fishing. Yes. Yes, off the mark. Get in there. £36 pounds four. We just got the fish out of the water. We're making sure that the fins were okay. We've weighed the fish. Now we're gonna take some snaps. But before we do that, let's just put some water on the fish. It's really important, especially when it's warm like it is today, that we keep the fish nice and wet so we can get some nice shots, keep them as best condition as we can. Check the mouth. So we've got the Pro Care, couple of drops, tiny bit of water, and it seals it. Job done. So here she is, 36 pounds four. Happy days, first of the trip. Let's hope for some more to come. So here she is, first one of the trip. Terry's playing one as we speak. Plenty more to come, hopefully. I think it's gonna be a fantastic week. Oh, I'm awake. Excuse the top being off and my uh, dad bod out, but I was literally just put that other fish back, getting into some more dry clothes, and it's gone again. Mate, we are in for an absolute week, I'm telling you. Yes, there we go, that'll do. Here's fish number three of the morning, although I believe I've got a PB in the net, so we're gonna get that one out and show you that, because that one is big. So as you can see, we're standing here with a tripod and an unhooking mat. Terry has gone absolute lump in the net, 
really big common. You probably see me land it for him. His PB is 54 pound and you know what? I've got a feeling it's bigger than that. So hopefully I'll be giving him a soaking. <laughs> but yeah, the boys are bringing it over now and then we can weigh it together and uh, we can see how big it is. But yeah, come on lads, let's get this, uh, let's get this chunk weighed. Right. Here's a big fish. Cheers, mate. Well done. All right. We've got to get a net. I am absolutely buzzing. Boys, are going to lift it up and I'll hook it on. One, two, three. And then we'll see how big she goes. Can you? Yeah. Yep, can clear. So she weighs exactly 57. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No. No. <laughs> the tail's getting soaked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Mate. Well done. Oh, cheers, mate. <laughs> And there we have it, 57 and a half pound. Like for me, this carp is bigger than pro any of us seen before. As I said at the intro to the film, I'm used to fishing English park lakes, things like that. Lots of hustle and bustle. So to catch a fish of this size is incredible. Um, I'm, I can definitely see the appeal for these kind of lakes and why people come on holiday. So let's get her in the water. Fifty-seven pounds, new euro PB. I am absolutely close. Time to have a look at the rigs. The first fish I had was over a load of bait and that's on a Slip D multi-rig, very simply tied. I think Charlie's actually using the same variation of this. I'm using the Camo X in 25 pound and soft and that's all the way through with just a little bit stripped. I think Charlie's using it as a combi rig, but this is mine, but I've actually changed tactics. The fish just don't seem to be on the bait. So I actually have swapped over and now I'm gonna be fishing solid bags, which is a slightly different rig I'm using the same lead system, which is the uni lead clip. Uh, with slightly lighter lead than the four ounce that I've got on this one. I'm not using an inline lead like most people do in the solid bags. I found it makes no difference whatsoever. I really like to lose the lead on my take, especially when I'm fishing for big fish. I don't really like the lead being wrapped over the top of it. So for me, the uni lead clip does it all. And if I want to punch a single out there, I still can with no dramas whatsoever. It's just easy for me to set up. When I'm fishing with singles like this, I'll be casting it out with about six foot of leader, knowing that it's really, really pinned down. But when I'm fishing with solid bags, I basically make my leaders quite a bit shorter, probably about two foot, and I pre-make them. So I have them all done, all two foot long, all with a nice loop on the end, and I can just loop to loop my line as and when I need to. Very, very simple. Hook link is Camo X in 25 pound soft, and I'm gonna be using a size four big point hook. I've stripped the majority of it, and I do that after I've actually tied the hair rig. I pull a bit out, two inches off I strip that then I tie the hair and that's nice and flexible and then I whip it seven times and that brings the plastic coated side all the way through after about 10 mil I then strip it all the way back bare so there's loads of flexibility but you've got that little kicker coming out the eye which really does help when it's turning over in the fish's mouth leaning on I've basically cut down a small bit of anti-tangle sleeve so I've just got enough to cover the quick link that gives me even more movement at the rig end. And then moving on to the uni lead clip, I'll attach a two ounce lead onto this and this follows through to about two foot of lead free leader. My PVA bag mix consists of S7 pellet, 
some rock salt and some hemp and buckwheat. The reason I've got rock salt in there, not only because they absolutely love it, but because it makes the hemp and buckwheat saline, which means it doesn't melt the PVA. And that is ready to cast out. That'll do. Number five. It's just coming up to five o'clock. Uh, so we're going to reel in and go up for dinner now and the rod's rattled off. The one again just cast over to that far margin. A couple of grains of single corn, a couple of grains of corn on the hook. And uh, yeah, we've got this lovely upper 20. Let's get him back and go up for some dinner. What a fish. Another one just before breakfast. Let's get her back. So the lead had literally just hit the floor and we was in straight away. Day three and it is an exact mirror image. The fish have turned up late morning. They're showing again all along this margin, out the pressure. I haven't had any rods in the water. I just waited for them to come in, cast a single straight on their head, and we're in within minutes. It just shows that a completely different approach to these commercial waters, and uh, you can literally have it off. I think that's the quickest bite I've ever had in 20 years of angling. You can see the double yellow corn just hanging out in the corner of the bottom lip. And that is another big common. Oh my God. Well, I've literally still got the common down there that I landed 10 minutes ago. I flicked two more rods out on them and we're in again. I've never had fishing this hectic to be fair. Not for a long, long time. Generally the pits that I fish in the UK, you know, you're, you're lucky if you get 10 or 15 fish a year. Like we're hitting five a day. It's, uh, it's incredible angling really.
So again, repeating exactly the same process. And once again, they turn up and it's game on. Two of two. Okay. Oh, I'm awake. Newbies, man of the moment. Mate. I was just saying, I've never known anything like it. Literally, mid morning, they don't show anywhere else on the lake, and they are just—they've come in here two days on the trot, and just absolutely smashed it to bits. I mean, you're, to be honest, great angling, really, really good angling. Yeah, really good. A lot of people would have just, you know, sat back, left the rigs on the baited areas, and thought, yeah, it's all right. They only show 20 yards to the right. They'll move over and start eating the bait, but tell them straight on it. Love it, well done, Straight mate. on it. And I just can't believe it. It's like clockwork, isn't it? It's yeah. like, it gets to about 11 o'clock, they just turn up in this corner, which it makes a lot of sense, really. The sun comes up over there. This is the first bit of water that gets warm. Uh, all the rigs are out of the water for breakfast, yeah. and they just trickle down here, yeah. and they can't go any further. I mean, I've even left my rods out um, from breakfast. So when I, you know, at about nine o'clock, you're really in, go and have breakfast, and I haven't put my rods back out, um, just hoping that they would start showing sort of between me and Tell or on my side or his side, but they've just literally just come all the way down into the corner. Right, so this is the third one. I've already slipped a little common back. It was maybe upper double, scraper 20. This one's maybe 23, 24, something like that. But I've got another really big common in the net. Definitely 40 plus. Uh, so we're gonna slip this one back, get the scales out, get all set up, and let's get the bigger one out. So this is the bigger one of the three. It's another big common, so let's see how it goes. £42.14, ounces. so it's a 40. Let's get it up for some pictures. Here we have it, £42.14, ounces. lovely long grey common. So quite typical of the ones in this lake. But yeah, another big carp. So we need to get these rods out there as fast as we can and let's keep going. But I've just got, I see it's got a little hook hold in his mouth. I'm just going to treat that and then we'll get his slip back. Fried stick in before you um, hit me with it. All right. What's happening? You good? Yeah, good. Yeah, really good. Fried um, stick, water, yes. boilies. Yeah. New approach? Yeah, washed out baits. Yeah, nice. Um, exactly what I do back home. Yeah. So I've noticed that everybody is using a spawn. Yeah. Or a spod yeah, or yeah. whatever. And just want to be a bit different. Yeah. Just to see if that, because those little tweaks yeah. could change everything. Well, from knowing you fishing at home, I know that. Big spread of boilies, yeah. uh, fish are picking it up in yeah. between. Yeah. You know, it's just it's the way we fish over our over Wellington Country Park, isn't it? Yeah. So And no one else is doing no it. No one's doing it. Well, actually. Are you doing it? No. No. <laughs> but I have seen Go since on. you've been doing it, oh. I've seen a few other people start doing it. Oh, okay. So I know like for a fact, people are definitely jumping on seeing the, me out. Oh, you're you. doing you, someone's doing something different, let's jump on that. Yeah. And that's what you get on these places. So yeah. when we walk round and everyone's bombing, that's because everyone's bombing that's what i think yes if you start catching on throwing stick everyone will be throwing stick yeah if you start catching on singles everyone will be pinging out singles so it's one of them pack mentality when you start seeing it's carp angling all over you know when you start seeing people do things and they're doing it well they start copying which yeah. is great because yeah. then you can change your way and then yeah. you know the edge only lasts so long doesn't yes it? absolutely um, so you've got in first and so you have a few mate yeah fingers crossed there's 
few showing this morning, which is nice. Yeah. I saw a massive one show over Tau. Yeah, which is I've great, got a fizzer so. showing over mine now. I can see a uh, oh, yeah. big, big fizzer bait. I put a bit of bait out last night. I haven't had nothing through. Oh. Through the night. Terry's in, I think. So I'm Terry on me. Who you was either. Your line's gone very tight, Jay. <laughs> yeah, Jay's in. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. I just literally was talking to Charlie. Look back at my spot in, in normal conversation. I just see a big fizz of bubbles. And uh, away it went. <laughs> yeah, couldn't have, um, couldn't have timed that any better, really. The Uniclip's done its job. Let's drop the lead on the take. Means I can play this with no dramas of that lead swinging around. You see the bend in these rods are unbelievable. I absolutely love these rods. These are the Free Spirit High S's. High S, sorry. In three and a quarters. So once again, you do not need to come to France with four pound test curve rods. You know, all that sort of jazz. Three and a quarter. 12 foot six. Use the clutch. Use the bend in the rod so you don't feel like you're going to lose it and it's an absolute joy to play fish on. Simply elbow on the back of the landing net, it gives you the leverage and lift her up. Wait until the face is near the spreader block and then you're away to go. Once you land it, lift it up nice and high, pull it back towards you, make sure it's slack in the line so you don't pull the fish's mouth, then sort out all your unhooking mat stuff and you're ready to go. So we've got a lovely long common in there, probably 30 pound, We'll have a quick look at her, and then we'll get back and see how Charlie's getting on. Oh, well, there she is. Not a monster, probably, I don't know, 28 pounds, something like that. What an absolute result. Awesome. Over a spray of boilies, you right, mate? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all good. Cracker. So, sorry, uh, <laughs> she was having a nice chat. <laughs> yeah. Finding good. out your approach, and uh, is that mad, though? See them fizz up? It's amazing. And then it just rips off. Brilliant. Good job Rob was here to save the day. Yeah. The, uh... <laughs> Good cameraman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Perfect. Right, anyway, enough chat. Let's get, get her back. back. And we can yeah, uh, carry on our conversation because I was quite interested about the washed out part of the boilies and that. Yeah, it's anyway, an unused method. It, it is, mate, yeah. Right, let's put this back. Go from there. Oh, you all right? It's all right, wasn't it? Yeah. Well Lovely. done, well done. Cheers, mate. So uh, talk to me about washed out baits. Yeah. I've got a couple of theories. I do it slightly different. You've just got plain water in there, haven't you? Yeah. Um, have you done that this morning? Have you done it last night? Last night. Yeah. Um, I've done it because I think two things. One, obviously, the washed out, I think, is great. The yeah. carp, I think, it's been on the bottom for a bit longer. Yeah, perfect. Changes its colour. Yeah. But then also, all of the juices of the bait, the additives and whatever goes into a bait. I'm not yeah. a bait maker, so I don't really know yeah, too same. much about it. But same, totally, totally. all of the goodness, I then think, will then go into the boilie as well. Yeah, like all it's the like others. Drawing in, yeah. 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 Um, sometimes I do put in hemp oil all and right. some other oils yeah. and maybe some salt yeah. as well. Yeah. Definitely this Himalayan salt, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've got some brock salt with me, some yeah. big chunks, and I put that in there as well. Nice. And then that, yeah, just, that it just absorbs it as well. Yeah, nice. Because um, at the minute, because I think we're only a couple of weeks away from spawning probably. Yeah, exactly. Especially with this hot weather. Yeah. They're, they're searching for the minerals. Yeah, yeah. happy days. Um, so, yeah. I'll do mine, I'll, I'll put a little bit of water in, and yeah. I put quite a lot of hydro spot syrup in there. It's quite a thick liquid. Mm -hmm. So then I put the water in, um, so that makes that a little bit thinner as well. Okay. Um, and I have noticed the bait then changes the colour, and it also really takes on that smell but one of the biggest advantages i've used with washing out the baits is they never ever split when you use a frying stick absolutely so the amount of people that have to wet the stick yes. before they use it to stop the boilies Brilliant. if you wet the boilies first yeah. even if you just put a little skin over them mm -hmm. you don't ever have to worry about wetting the stick or getting split boilies again so mm. i love doing that good tip yeah really good and also when you're doing your oils if there's a chop on yeah. the water 
isn't it great seeing that? Well, that's that's the that. best thing because if you put that out there now, yeah, and then you take your eye off of it, you yeah. don't know where that last boil you land. But when you've got an oil in there, mm. you know that it creates that slick mm. and your job done. I mean, the good thing about that frying stick as well, you don't have to take your eye off the spot. It's you can brilliant. literally load it, throw yeah. it, load it, throw it, yeah. and you know that you, you by the time that one's landed, you've already loaded it and you're doing the other one. It's, it's definitely it's a lot quicker. A lot quicker. Yeah, a lot, lot quicker. Cool. Awesome. Right. I'm going to get back put some more bait out. Nice one, mate. Thank uh, you. Good luck. Yeah. And, uh, Go and get your other rod out. No, there's still fish on the spot. I now. know. I'm on it. <laughs> See you in a minute. Cheers, bud. Another advantage of washed out baits is they're obviously going to be heavier. So when we have seagulls like we got now or birds coming down, taking the bait, and they're really good at it, I reckon they get 90% of the bait that you're putting out there. You can either wait for them to clear off, wait till dark, or just, you can feed them off, but just carry on putting your baits out like so, and you'll notice that they won't get all of them because they are heavier. It's a really, really good edge. If they're there and they're rolling and they're feeding, you don't need any bait. They're already there eating. All you've got to do is make sure your rig lands in the middle of them or off and then on, you know. But like I said before, I'm just casting over the showing fish, pulling back, feeling the lead drop down amongst the whole pack. And it is taking 10 minutes at a time to get a take. First take was straight away, the lead hit the floor. But at the moment, 10 minutes and it's still showing here, here. They are jam packed in here throughout the daytime. So I'm fishing with a mono and a fluorocarbon leader. So I do have quite a lot of play in the line. I don't have to, like I can give them a bit when I need to give them, but uh, you can play them quite nicely. Um, if you have too tight a clutch, you just need to loosen it off when they start to go because you want to try your hardest not to pull the hook out of their mouth. Look at that, you can see the corn just hanging out the straight out the centre of the bottom lip. And we have another one, number four today. Let's get another rig on. They're still showing out there. We'll get another rod back out, see how many we can get. Right, this is turning into a, a dream day for me, an absolute nightmare for the cameraman. We're trying to get all the fish filmed and things like that, and every time we get one out, the rod goes again. I don't know how them match anglers do this all day, every day, you know. Another original, mate. <laughs> Proper. Well done, mate. Cheers, mate. That's, a, that's another big one. It's been absolutely hectic. I've had another two small ones that I've slipped back, and then I've just landed another big common. Definitely getting upwards of £40 again. So uh, it's an unbelievable couple of days of angling. And if it carries on like this, I'm in for an absolute bag full. £42.5. So that's my second 40 of the day. Five fish so far. I had five yesterday. It's not a bad average so far. There she is. Second 40 of the day. Some of these older ones are definitely all battered up. 
Looks like this one's got a bit of a broken tail in the past. So, but yeah, good times. So day three, change of tactics, resulted in this 28 pound beautiful common. I've just seen a fish show over my bait, so quick photo of this and let's get that rod back out. When you're putting the fish back, just take your time, let them sit there for a bit, open up the sling. This one's ready to go because I can feel it kicking and uh, Away he goes. Now go and get me your brother or your big brother. Let's try and get it in the net first time. There we go. And he's in. Every single fish, those uni clips, have done what they're supposed to do and ejected the lead. But we've got two more now to sort out. Uh, and then we'll see what happens tomorrow. <sighs> 44 and a half. The other one I just caught, we just slipped him back. It was a high 20 mirror or something like that. Nice fish, but uh, we'll get this one up and then um, carry on. And here we go again. So we've just been up for dinner, uh, come back. Charlie's just had one. And then I come back to my swim and they're still shutting out there. So I flicked another two singles on them. I've had two more fish and I've had another 40 for the day. 44 and a half pounds. Sorry if I'm out of breath. But... start of day four and uh, the sun has literally just peaked over the horizon there I've got one in the retainer already and I'm into my second fish the wind started blowing down here yesterday afternoon all night and all this morning they are absolutely stacked up down here now so if the week wasn't already going amazingly well I think it's about to get a whole lot better
tell. Come in, mate. What's going on? How sings? Not bad. Oh, Not thank bad. you very much. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Not bad. Another two in the nets. Really? Ready to get pictures, yeah. <laughs> been a... I love that. Right. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. They're going mad. Really? Yeah, really good. How's your week going? Yeah, good. Really good so far. Yeah, yeah. It's um, not as good as yours, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think the whole lake think that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, lovely day today. I mean, you couldn't ask for better weather with nah, it, yeah. it's pushing down into your corner. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean. Sun's out. Fish are here. Yeah. It's got to keep going through. You still keep I? into the same. Same tactic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just as soon as one parks its head up, put a rig on its head and then that goes and then just repeat that yeah just going through the day like that isn't it what do you think to the lakes it's beautiful isn't it mm. i can see i can see why so many people like coming to these sort of venues don't you i yeah. mean it's, it's one it's a great social and yeah, two yeah. the fish in here are massive and and yeah. they fight like i know we always say it when we were playing the fish but yeah. they really do fight well don't they yeah exactly yeah they're um it's a, it is uh, the same as uh, any commercial lake, isn't it? Like lots of fish, very social, swims close together, you know, and as we've proven, you get the right tactics and mm. you're on the fish, mm. you're gonna you're gonna absolutely hammer them as well. Yeah. So you've had a couple of fish as well now, mate. Yeah. Do you think you're gonna um, stick with the change you've made or are you gonna change again or? No, no, I'm gonna stick with it. Yeah. Um, reason being, obviously, I reckon 80% of the fish stock are in this corner. <laughs> As we've seen, I mean, it's been six shows already. Um, well, just having a chat with you the last couple of minutes. Yeah, it's um, like bobbing for apples. Isn't yeah. it? <laughs> I'm very jealous yeah. and envious. There's no way you're going to change your plans. No, no way. Uh, I, I mean, I've changed three times. Let's just keep doing what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's working. Yeah. And uh, let's see what today brings. Yeah, exactly. Here's the loads more. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, 47, 47, seven. Happy days. Lovely. So there we go. Change the tactic. It's really worked on this one. I was putting a bit of bait out with a spawn. Only 15, 20 spawns. But they just weren't on the bait. They're just not feeding on that spot. So, brought the rods in slightly closer. Solid PVA bags. I had a take last night, which done me, and uh, dropped the lead, but spat the hook. And then this one again this morning has ripped off with exactly the same tactic. So that's what I'm going to be going with for the next few days. See how it goes. Solid bags are the way forward at the moment. They're just not on the bait. Absolutely brilliant. Let's get her back so she can fight another day. It's breakfast time soon. I'm starving. So one last look before she swims back. What an absolute stunner. You'll notice that I've got the slinging shot. The reason I'm doing that is because we all want to get these lovely water shots. And yes, I might lose a little bit of aesthetics by having the slinging shot. But you know what, if she kicks, all I've got to do is gently put her back down and she'll be in the sling and you can carry on taking your photos. Last thing you want to do is get rid of the sling or get rid of the mat, whatever you're using, and then she kicks away and you never get a good photo of her. So I always leave mine in Lift her up, take a photo, and go from there. I would much rather have the matting shot or the slinging shot than lose the fish totally. Right, let's put her back. Okay, let's talk bait. I'm going to be spawning most of the bait out this week. 
speaking to the lads, throwing stick can work, but there's a lot of seagulls on here, so it's a bit pointless. You're going to be throwing sticking them out, and the seagulls will be coming down and taking them. And I do like spotting that a bit of crushed boilie, some chopped boilie, a few bits and pieces to get them grubbing around. So the bulk of my bait will be S7 from DNA Baits. That's the boilie that I choose. It's a lovely fish meal. That's going to be the majority of the bait, and that's going to be crushed up in the crusher. There's going to be some chops in there as well, plus some Himalayan rock salt, some hemp, and some buckwheat. So to create the crumb, I'm literally going to grab a couple of scoops and put that into the crusher. If I was doing any big volume at a time, I'd probably use the extender plate so I could put five kilos in at a time. But I'm only going to do small batches at a time. Once I've got that boil in there now, I'm actually going to put the Himalayan rock salt with it. This saves me trying to mix it up all at the same time. It saves a lot of time afterwards because once you're scooping it, once it's in the bottom, you're scooping it around. It's a nightmare if you put too much in, you've got to try and get to the bottom of the mix. So I'll put it in now, which makes life a lot easier. Could also do that with a hemp and buckwheat if you want, but I'll try to do it with the salt, just so I know that every bit of boilie is grabbing onto the salt, and then it'll bring it down to the bottom. So every little flake, every little crumb will have a little bit of salt to go with it. So if you've never seen the crusher before, it's very simple. You put your bait inside, once it's all filled up, you close the lid, keep it firmly pushed down, and rotate the handle. Really, really simple and really quick. Five or six turns that way, then go back and do the same that way and keep repeating the process until all the bait has gone through. Have a little check, little move around, close it up, start again. As you can see, that's done. Literally takes seconds to do that amount of bait. There's not anything on the market that could do it any quicker. So this is absolutely perfect. Okay, so now that's done, very simply, take off the lid, put it to one side, grab a couple of scoops of hemp and buckwheat, chuck that in there as well. First off, it's a little bit of hemp oil, don't have to go crazy with this stuff. What's brilliant about it is when it goes to the bottom of the water, any fish disturbs any of the bait, you get a huge slick come up. So if you go to the lake and you see your spot slicking up, they call it, you know there's fish or there's something that's disturbing your bait on the bottom. This is a real good indicator that fish are around the area. So I always try to add a little bit of hemp oil. And also another little tip, dip your hook baits in it as well before you cast out. It shows exactly where your bait's landed, next to your marker float or wherever you're aiming for and the slick will come off your hook bait so you know exactly where you are and if you're baiting up to it you can use the slick as a marker and this is the hydro spod syrup absolutely stinks hence the name spod syrup it's brilliant for spotting it really is good it's super heavy sinks to the bottom even if you just drop this in on its own it sinks straight to the bottom there's not much residue up in the water which means the fish are always down on the bottom and they're always eating the bait they're not up and down in the columns trying to find it they know where it is and they're home down on the bottom exactly where your hook bait is again a nice big glug of this once that's all stirred up leave it for 24 hours absolutely perfect you know it's spot on I'm going to add some chops to the mix as well. The liquids are all in there, all the bait's mixed up, a few chops, just so you've got some real bigger pieces and you know that if any of the roach or rudd or any of the real small species nick all the little crumbs, you're going to be left with some bigger baits over the top. Very simply, grab a handful of boilie, tip that in. There isn't anything quicker to make halves than this thing. It's <laughs> It's fantastic. I absolutely love it. Very simply, put the blade in like that, push it down, and then you end up with a load of lovely chops coming out the back. Pull it away. So that's my bait in a nutshell. Really, really simple to make, very quick to make, and the carp absolutely love it. <laughs> so as you can see I'm lent into one I haven't had many this week I've changed the approach a few times gone from the uh, little wafter over some bait which I caught gone from a solid bag which I caught and this one's actually gone back onto a single yellow wafter 15 minutes later it's gone exactly the same tactics as Tell's been doing to be honest when they're in front of you can have them, it's as simple as that. All these people are pulling their air out when it's not in front of them. You know what, when the fish are there, you can catch them.
Lovely. Happy day. Just as I was clipping the bobbin on for the rod that I've just recast after that fish, and this one's ripped away. Both of them have probably only been out there half hour, total max. This one on the take, as soon as I lifted into it, took line straight away. But there she goes, 35 pound. First of a brace this morning. Really, really happy with this one. Slight change of approach again. Went back to fishing singles and had this one. The singles worked the first time, then the PVA bags worked. I went back onto singles and had this one and I've got one even bigger in the sling. So I'll put this one back, show you that one. Happy days. Proper, proper happy with this. What a great session we're having. <laughs> this has absolutely made my week. I am so over the moon with this one. Just look at the length of it. That has got to be near on three and a half foot long. As soon as I struck into this one, it was like a torpedo. It just started taking line near enough flat rodded me. I thought it was a catfish at first. And then, well, just held bottom the whole time. Fought like an absolute steam train. I am so happy with this one. And it's just over 52 and a half pound. What an absolute beast. I am buzzing, so, so buzzing. Really, really happy with this one. Like I said before, slight change of tactic, single look bait, straight on top of his head, just a little PB wafter doing the damage. Love it, absolutely buzzing. So let's get her back, we can go from there. The rig I'm using in this session is a fluorocarbon Spectre 20 pound D rig and I'm just going to quickly show you how to tie it. So the first thing you need to do, you need to take off around 14, 16 inches of the fluorocarbon material and then you're going to need a size 4 curve apex hook. Now the first thing you're going to have to do is tie a whipping knot. There's a couple of ways to do this but I find the easiest way is if you push the fluorocarbon material into the eye of the hook towards the point then just fold it back along the shank of the hook and grip it in this position and then take the fluorocarbon material loop it around so it's now running around the hook like this and then you just take one side of the loop and wrap it around the shank of the hook four times then grip all of the loops with your finger so you're basically just left with the tag end. Remove it from the eye, and then you need to just pull it tight down to the knot. And then if you grab both pieces, you can then pull it tight. And that's the easiest way to form the whipping knot, I find. Then push the knot up so that it sits just behind the opposite side of the point of the hook and then just snip off your tag end. You then need to take a mini hook ring swivel and then slide that onto the fluorocarbon material and then loop it back round so it forms your D. Push the material back through the eye of the hook and then you can create your D as close to or as far away from the shank as you'd like it. I like to put it somewhere around this position here and then do your knotless knot back up the shank of the hook. So your first turn is not on the, the side where metal joins metal. It's on the clean bend. Wrap it up the shank five times, 
back through the eye of the hook, pull tight, and there you've formed your D-rig. The next thing I like to do is I like to put my anti-tangle sleeve on first before I create the figure of eight knot. So the next thing I do is I slide on my anti-tangle sleeve and that makes it a lot easier. You're not trying to pull that knot, that fluorocarbon knot, through your anti-tangle sleeve. And now we tie a figure of eight loop knot in the opposite end. Perfect. The next thing I do is grab a length of the floss, thread it onto the ring swivel, take two pieces of artificial corn or artificial maize, slide that down just so that top swivels inside the artificial bait. This is the tricky bit because it's quite windy out here. So. so just blob it down on the floss against the bait. Then I like to add a little piece of the rock bottom tungsten putty, just above halfway back towards the figure of eight knot. And what that, what that creates is when the lead hits the floor, that piece hits first and then it kicks out the rig. So it works like that. And then I also, personally, I just like to give this section of the material just a little run through my thumb and my finger, just to loosen it up at that angle. So there you have it, the fluorocarbon D-Rig. This has caught me a load of fish this week, up to just under 60 pounds. Strong, reliable, and a great rig. We're into another one at Dream Lakes Lake 2. What a week we've all had. Couldn't ask for a better week. Fantastic weather as well, so let's get this one in. Another fantastic common at Dream Lakes. What a day. Let's get her back. Right, I've been wading through the numbers and I've been going through a hell of a lot of like 30 pound male carp, really angry. They're all, all tensed up, ready to go. And I've been wondering if I'm gonna get through to one of the bigger females. And uh, yeah, that is completely different. He's a proper donkey, mate. That. That is a monster. I think I'm going to be getting wet for the second time. I think week. you are as well. <laughs> Jesus. That's a proper monster, that. I've already zeroed the scales in that, but all that hard work, getting through the numbers, I know. has finally like yeah. paid off. You as know? you'll probably see, he tells me smashing it in this corner, but he has been plagued with a load of mouths. Probably what? Start off at about 25, I finish at about 35. Yeah, 25 to you 35. You know, just catching them all day long. Yeah. But, um, yeah, when you got the take and then you're playing it and I was <laughs> like, this is, a, that, this is, is a different fish, this yeah. is a different fish, so, right, let's get it done. Right. <laughs> uh, you're getting a soaking, boy. <laughs> 62... 4. 62, 4. You are Jesus. getting a proper soaking, <laughs> but I'm mate. mate. That is... That is a big carp. Mate, that's a monster. Big carp. Well done, mate. Well done. Cheers, mate. Thank Proper. you. Well, what a 
huge, huge mirror carp. 60 pound, but uh, two new Euro PBs on this trip. And uh, it's been a phenomenal, crazy weeks fishing. I'm gonna see if I can do this. Sixty-two four, new Euro PB, and uh, so it's just unbelievable. I've been wading through the numbers, like fish after fish after fish, to the point where you know the fur is uh, are not even going on to camera. There's so many of them, and then just wondering when a when a big one would turn up, and uh, she finally did. Mate, I am so excited. Look at it. I know. It's a proper lump. It's well, massive. Buzzing it? for you. Look at it. It is a proper tank. Look at what it is. What a weapon. Look at mate. that. What a <laughs> car. Well done, mate. Proper. Well done, mate. Let's get her back in the water, get some water shots, and uh, yeah, my second sulking of the week. So Lance, what do you think? I think it's been a brilliant week. Really good week. Yeah. Really yeah, it's been a week. it's been a hectic week, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I didn't really know sort of uh, how I was going to think coming into this sort of commercial venue. But uh, do you know what? If if you're an angler with limited time or this is your like holiday of the year, then this place is definitely catered for you. To be honest, I've really really enjoyed it. The carp have been really good. Yeah. Big, big and loads of them yeah so it's been get, a good get, crack at it getting to the stage where you're just turfing back 40 pounders yeah it's like. insane and the amount of shows you see it's just incredible yeah I, I haven't fished the lake where there's been so many shows the oh. confidence that yeah. you sit behind the rods when them fish are showing is just sky high every time in it so yeah yeah that's the crack mate so yeah. shall we uh dig in get some food yeah nice we're going to get the cameramen something to eat we're going to fill our bellies and then we're going to pack away tomorrow happy 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 Yep, good trip. What a morning. Got two in the sling, one in the net down there. Now I'm into another one. New approach that I've done, putting out about four or five kilos of boilie at night because the seagulls have been a nightmare and it's paying off. In she goes.
49.12. What a morning. So yeah, let's have a look at her. What a fish. 49 pounds, 12 ounces. Absolute carnage this morning. I've had four takes. I've put two of them back. One was very camera shy when I tried to get a photo. They were about 25, 30 pounds. And believe it or not, I've got an even bigger one in the sling waiting for its photo. Charlie's got an absolute lump. I'm going to give him man getting it onto the mat and we'll have a little look at it. You absolute legend, mate. What a chunk. <laughs> right, check its fins. Up. Check its fins yeah. and everything because you're in the water and I don't have yeah. to. Wait there. All good? No. It's really yeah. important that we check all the fins that yeah. are flat to the body before you I've take them out. out. All right, ready? Yeah. Come on, mate. There you go, one absolute brilliant week. It's exactly what we're coming for. We've all actually fished with different approaches and we've all caught massive carp. You couldn't have asked for a better week. I mean, come on, Charlie, look at that. I think that Over is the a moon. PB, right? It is a PB, yeah. Someone's getting wet, eh, Tell? <laughs> Definitely. It's been an unbelievable week's angling, really. Um, yeah, loads of fish, loads of laughs. It's been and, amazing. Uh, I got to back. Oh, my back's gone. Let's get it back. We do a load of water shots. You're going to get absolutely soaked. We've got about five minutes before we get breakfast. I'm absolutely starving. Let's get it back. Let's do the off. Awesome. Happy days. The approach smashed it.